Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest European Chats with Congress New Energy Work uh, webinar. I'm very happy to have uh, Chris with me. Hi, Chris. Hi, Cliff. How are you doing? I'm doing great. So we're just waiting for people to log on now. We've got, we've now, believe it or not, we've got, uh, if you look in the chat, Chris, you'll see everyone saying hi. Yes, hi, everyone. Um, from all over the world. Mm, lovely. I'm um, just going to, while that's going on, I'm just going to play the, the uh, intro video sent, uh, created for us by the European Shatsu All right, here we go, folks. Congress. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. All right. Hi, everyone. And I've got some intro intro um, slides now. You see all of everyone from all over the, all over the world um, signing in. Wonderful. Hello, everyone. And believe it or not, we've gone over the one thousand mark. Last time I looked, we've got one thousand and forty four people signed up for this webinar series, which is incredible. Uh, lots of you will be watching this, watching the recording at home. Um, if you can't make the live event, but we're expecting, you know, quite a few people to sign up uh, to sign in this evening. So, yeah, the topic is the four C's and I've got a poll I'm going to um, uh, launch in a bit to find out if you know anything about the four C's. That would be interesting, Chris, to see if anyone's even heard of it. Yeah, exactly. I am <laughs> um, sceptical about that. <laughs> and here's a picture of you. Look. Hey. Great likeness. Yes, <laughs> almost exactly like me, isn't it? It is, yeah. And so you've been doing Tai Chi and Qigong since 1986. You actually started off doing martial arts, didn't you? Well, I started off getting sick and then finding my way back to some kind of uh, notion of health through all this stuff. So I'm a classic case. Oh, all right. So it was your, you, you did it as a self-healing thing to start with? Absolutely, yeah. Oh, right. And Qigong and Tai Chi was the way you did it for yourself then? That's what I found. With. And then I stumbled on acupuncture and then I found Shiatsu and then I was home. All right. Well, great. And you've been moving into Shiatsu and acupuncture since 1992. Yeah. And you're also, yeah. Well, that's since great. I started officially doing treatments, but I was doing, you know, stuff before that. Yes. There's quite a tradition of um, shiatsu in um, uh, the martial arts, Japanese martial arts, isn't there? I know that um, Michel O'Doul, who did the webinar before yours, he actually was introduced to shiatsu by a practitioner who was basically um, a martial artist, you know, Aikido, I think it was. Yeah, it's very so popular among the Aikido people. Yeah, cool. And you're also the president of two organizations. Yes, indeed. Yes. <laughs> That's the European Chatsu Federation yep. and the European European Federation for Complementary and Alternative Medicine, isn't it? Exactly right. Yeah. Yes. How did you manage to get those jobs? Oh, uh, people ask you to do stuff and you do it if you're an idiot, you know the story. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a Brilliant. pleasure. It's a real pleasure. It just takes a little bit of time. That's all. Of course it does. Yeah, it takes loads of time, if you ask me. I know that kind of thing. Okay, look, let's find out a little bit. Let's first of all find out whether, um, how many of the uh, people who've signed on have are going to the European Shatsu Congress. So let's just see what... We're going to ask everyone who's tuning in whether you're going to the Congress or not, and then we'll get an idea of the proportions. Here we go. So just click into the poll and we'll see. Okay, we've got 20% of the people are actually going to be there, Chris. Yeah. And about 50% can't make it, and about 33% aren't sure yet. I'm not sure. So that's quite a lot of people going to be coming to the Congress. Okay. And now the next thing we're going to do, I'm just going to hide that. And I'm going to just see if you're going to, let's just find out. Um, how would you rate your understanding of the four C's? Have you ever even heard about it? If, if you haven't, then go nothing. Um, if you know a lot about it, then very good. There must be some of your students there, Chris. <laughs> very good. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering. That's probably right, Cliff. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe there's somebody out there who can combine knowledge with it. Already, yeah, he's already done it. We'll find out. Yeah, perfect. Okay, here we go. So... Not sure, 24%, 3%, very good, 
nine percent very nine percent good so we've got about ten percent people who who have heard of it so there must be people that have studied with you probably um and but we've got by far the biggest proportion as you probably expected yeah. <laughs> um at 44 percent have don't know anything about it at all right. so yeah you've got a fresh new audience there um, a lot of people have not heard of it at all so you yeah. know cliff that's not surprising at all because there's nothing really written about it anywhere even though it appears in the Neijing. You look around and there's like people mention it, but there's no development, no descriptions, nobody's using it practically. So I basically had to start right. from scratch. That's great. I think it's always exciting when you do that, when you've got an area of research and you, you kind of work on it. It's really always very, very exciting. Yeah. It took me a while to get into it, but then when I did, it was like, okay, people were really receptive to trying it out. And then the feedback was building and building and building. And then it just every time you try it, you get new information. So now the basic framework is there, and we we refine, we deepen, and we see the the nuances as well. Cool. Okay. Well, let's uh, show your slides then. Let's do that. And uh, just let me know when you want me to, you know, move them along, Chris. Sure. And we'll just uh, yeah. So as you can see, this is from the Huangdi Neijing, which is the Yellow Emperor's classic of internal medicine, and the Ling Shu part, the pivotal spirit. So it's two parts. And this is from chapter 23, which is called the Treaties of the Seas, uh, Hai Lun. So Huangdi wants to know more about the four seas and the 12 channels. He throws the question out and Chi Bo catches the question and says, aha, I'm glad you asked. The 12 channels flow in all directions, up, down, in, out, and they converge in the four seas. And that's a phrase which kind of caught my interest. They converge in the four seas. So they're like a, catching point for the meridians that's excellent and the four c's are what exactly chi nutrition blood and marrow so that's from the most superficial the yang to the most deep yin at the marrow and that's kind of what the picture is helping to show a little bit slightly yeah, yeah. so that's the introduction that's the basic framework and that's more or less what you get from the neijing there's a few more details and we'll go into those but yeah. that's basically it, and that's where you're working from if you want to do something with this. So that's where we jump in. And if you go to the next okay. slide, yeah, and we can see that you might think that the four seas are like spread out horizontally, like the Atlantic and the Pacific and the Indian Ocean, that kind of thing. But what seemed to become very clear very quickly was it's instead depths going down, like from the top down. Okay. And that's what this picture yeah. is showing us. So we have one harmonious sea, but four depths. Each, right. each depth has a specific atmosphere, and there's movement upwards and downwards all the time through the seas, which means, of course, energy moving inwards and outwards through the human energy system, anatomically, energetically, in all ways. This right. is the basic okay. model. If we go to the next slide, we can start yeah. to see them as they are called. This is oceanography, actually. So funnily enough, this is actually there in oceanography that have these four levels, depending on which school of thought you attach yourself to, of course, there's always differences of opinion, but there you have sunlight zone, twilight, dark zone, and abyss. I don't know if you can read that, people. It's yeah, abyss, right down the bottom. Right down there in the dark. So abyss means the whole, right? The depth. The yes. Deep. So we have energy flowing from the Sea of Chi up, down towards the Sea of Mara, slowly, slowly, slowly. Energy flows, of course, upwards, from the Sea of Mara to the Sea of Chi. So it's going in both directions all the time. And of course, right. that is an answer to the eternal question about postnatal gene and prenatal gene. You have people in the classics yeah. saying, oh, you have your prenatal essence, and when you've used yes. it, that's it, you're dead. But we know that's yes. not true from experience, and the martial arts books are full of these stories about people who are weak or sick, building themselves up to yeah. become masters. How does that work? This is an explanation, yeah. one explanation for how that works. Energy trickling down from the surface, building up the depths. Right, right, cool, yeah. So when I was about 23 or four, maybe 24, I started uh, studying with a guy in London, Tai Chi guy, Ray Wilkins, excellent guy. And he recommended yeah. a book called Tai Chi Touchstones. I'm sure people have heard of it. And in that book, there's yeah. all these references to how Tai Chi strengthens the bones. And I read okay. that and thought, how, does, how do you strengthen the bones? How does that work? Now, today, I know 
because this is the model that explains it. There are other models, of course, but this one explains it really, really well. Because down in the marrow level, that's what's happening. The bones are strengthening. If we go, right, to, the, okay. if we go to the next slide, Cliff, we'll see, yeah. we can talk about energy going in, but also energy coming up and out. And this is the, the transference of energy that's constantly moving in and out through us all the time. And the four C's is one way of looking at that, getting an image for how that might work and how it might, uh, how it, how it might look. Right, so okay, yeah. We have this idea of surplus energy. Where if I eat well, if I sleep well, if I rest, if I have a great social life, if I have ideas flowing around me, if I'm in a harmonious state of living, I can save energy and that energy can trickle down through the layers into the deepest lying depots. And that's like the, the intelligence of the organism. It will always do that if we allow it. Yes. We don't always allow it, do we? No. <laughs> I've seen that I've seen I've seen that a similar idea in the production of key, you know, where the excess goes back down and stores in the kidneys and it supplements the prenatal gene, doesn't it? Exactly what we're so talking about here, Cliff. Yeah. Just the language yeah. is slightly different. It's just like imagery more than like technical words. But I love that stuff as well. And this is a way of fitting it into an image which people can imagine as well in terms of natural yes. depth. I think the thing that there's the difference though. Chris, is that it's more, this is more like three dimensional and it's got more texture to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. With, with, um, with that uh, production of key diagram, it's just a bit like it looks, it, I always think of it as a bit like pipes, you know, yeah. like this sort of energy here and a little bit of pipe goes here and yeah. you, know, you get the same feeling of, of the, the three dimensional feeling of the depths and the textures that you, you have in those images. That's what I love about this. And we're going to look at that really closely in a minute, but what we see is energy and resources traveling up and down continually. So it's not like it always goes down or always goes up. It's always this and this and this. But if we look at the superficial to the deep, that will happen when there's abundance. We have enough to eat. Right. We have time to sleep. We have rest. We're not in continual conflict or crisis. Yes. But then the other thing happens from the deep to the superficial when we're in crisis, when we're in conflict, when there's trouble, when times are yes. hard when food is scarce, then the energy has to come up from the sea of marrow and help us right. on the upper levels to operate on our daily, you know, our daily routines, our daily life to get us through things. Yeah. We're always up and down at the same time. So this is why all these exercises we do, yoga, qigong, tai chi, they're so useful for getting the energy down into the lower depths. Right. And if we don't do that, then we risk these horrible things like depression and burnout and all this kind of stuff where we've just drained the lower levels and use the energy out all the time without replacing it. So the four C's can help us kind of visualize that and get us friendly with those kind of ideas of energy moving up and down, in and out, and storage or release. Yeah, yeah, it's good. And it's, it's kind of simpler as well than having yeah. all, because production, the production of key is quite a complex idea, yeah. isn't it? And that's fine, but it's difficult to explain it to people. Yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. This is kind of more visual and it's more poetic and I always like those kind of things. Yeah, it's brilliant. Okay, so let's go. Let's move on. Yeah. Do what else? Okay, so yeah. here we go. Yeah. Here we are. Down in the abyss. You can see the words down there, the abyss, right at the bottom. And it's the deepest level, the Sea of Mara. So what I've done here is just created an image of dark, stillness, and something quite heavily structured. Even the pictures, I tried to make them look solid and heavy. And these are the kind of creatures I, I imagine living down there in that kind of yeah. total blackness, massive pressure, darkness, stillness. Imagine the seabed, really heavy, really still, yeah. really dark. And the kind of creatures who can manage to live down there, it's like, it's a miracle, right? But that's yes. our marrow level. And it shouldn't move fast. It should move slowly. And it's about long right. periods of time. Right, yes. And then yeah. if we go to the next slide, we'll see um, if we move up slightly, we come into the blood. So you see the color's a little bit lighter, but it's still dark, thick, viscous, and dense. A little bit more oxygen, a little bit more circulation, a little bit more flow, but still the pressure is really quite compact. Darkness reigns. And the creatures down here, this is something I picked up off the internet, they're actually red or black for camouflage. So it really fits in nicely with these blood and marrow images. There's a yeah. few creatures that I could imagine possibly making their life down at that level. And then we're talking about deep 
nourishment, of course, but still yes. a little bit more movement than the marrow. So a little bit more mobile, but still very thick and viscous, very like a conservation of energy, a binding of energy. Yes. Yeah. As we okay. come up, we get into a slightly lighter phase. That's the nutrition phase, yeah? Nutrition, right. So this is like you saying, Cliff, when we were talking about it before, you were saying this is a bit more accessible, isn't it? Yes. This is like our everyday, when we rest after a meal, or we just take a, you know, a coffee break, or we sit and stare out the window, or we're dreaming on the train, or sitting on the bus looking out the window, or just, you know, shooting the breeze with somebody, relaxing. And yeah. you can go in. We can relax. And then in terms of the seat, it's like a little bit more active, but not a lot. More abundant life, lighter, right. translucent. It's not transparent, but it's translucent. Yes. But it's still got texture. So I've called it a twilight right. zone, and that's actually exactly what they call that level of the sea. The oceanographers call it that. Right. So yeah. Like, oh, yeah. perfect. Thank you. A gift. Yeah. And then if we go all the way up to the top, here we go. Superficial level, the sea of chi, folks. This is like, phew, all your senses are open. The dolphins are swimming, jumping out of the ocean, playing. There's all these mm. colorful fish moving fast. Lots of light, lots of heat. We're at the surface now. And the creatures are thriving in their thin, oxygen-rich waters. There's no pressure. And the air and the water mix, and we call it the sunlight zone. Oh, right. Yeah, that's interesting, because that's that reminds me... It, it reminds me a little bit, I've just, just suddenly occurred to me, that it kind of reminds me a little bit of the three heaters because you've got the upper heater, which is more airy and it links with the air coming in, the chi, of course it and you've got the lower heater, which is to do with the lower density and the kidneys yeah, and the sexual essence. And then you've got the digestion in the middle. Mm -hmm. Bubbling around. It kind of matches that, doesn't it? It's very like that. It's just a slightly more developed model. It's four from three. So yeah. A little bit more nuanced, but it's very, very similar. Yeah, interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've never thought of it like that, but it is that's a fantastic image though. That is a fantastic image, especially with the it just occurred to me when the dolphin was jumping out of the water. Yeah. Because of the air, you know, the air exactly. interfacing with the with the ocean. Because that's a major life thing, isn't it? It's a major life thing, the oxygenation of the water and everything. Oh yeah. It's really important. So now we've seen them in terms of like the levels. Let's go back through them and look at them as uh, units, as depths, each one in its own sphere, its own little category. If we go forward one slide, we should be, let's see. Yeah. There it is. There's the CMO. And I just chose that image because it has a kind of bottom heavy, dark blue black image, like the watery element kind of thing. Yeah. So here we're talking about the brain, spinal cord and marrow, and this wasn't immediately apparent to me, but became apparent through the treatments, through the Qigong, through all the stuff that we did, ancestral lineage and heritage. And if we think about the, the back of the brain especially, and the yeah. instinctual knowledge going down through the spine, rooting down into the sacrum, and then what happens? The tailbone is there. The ancestral tail is right there. So yeah. within this whole see and marrow you have an ancestral memory bank which goes back i don't even know how far i'm not at all sure how far back but i imagine that it's infinite in terms of our human ancestry specifically our yeah. family ancestry of course which is interesting yeah. for a lot of people in terms of genetics and epigenetics if does trauma go through generations yes it does seem to so this is a way to get into that way of treating people getting in touch with stuff that's sitting there really, really, really deep in the system. Yeah. In terms of level, it's the deepest. In terms of time frame, it's the longest and the slowest. Core body zone would be the back and the top of the head, spine, sacrum, coccyx, which we just talked about. So those are its core body zones. But of course, it goes out into the skeleton and through the marrow, throughout the whole organism. Yeah. Now, this part here, Cliff, the abundance and the insufficiency, this is directly from the Neijing. From chapter 33. This is a little bit of information that was there. So you can see that abundance here means you have a lightness to yourself, an agility, you have great strength, you have the ability to accomplish things which would normally be beyond your capacity. Now that's a picture yeah. of Superman when you're feeling just really on the top of your game, like you feel like a million bucks because your CMR is full. You filled it, 
you're doing really, really good. You've been doing your Tai Chi for six weeks solid and you're just, you're there. Yes. Let's look at the opposite of that. Insufficiency, achy legs, lethargy, sleepiness, vertigo, ringing in the ears, dizziness, loss of vision. Yeah. Now this relates to the way I got into these things in a practical level. I was treating a person who I was really at my wits end with, how am I going to help this woman? We talked about it um, last time we met Cliff. And yeah. It was just getting worse and worse and worse. It was winter. It was cold. She's a little bit of an older person, let's say. And she's had an yeah. illness. Sudden illness took her really hard. And I was losing her. I couldn't think what to do, how to help her. Now, yeah. As I was focusing on these four C's, at the time I realized that I needed to get down underneath her into the sea of marriage to support her, to hold her there. And as I looked at these symptoms of insufficiency, I thought, oh my God, that's where she is. It's exactly where she is. So I, the whole thing kind of hit me like a hammer blow, like, oh, okay, let's just do this. And it really was a turning point when I managed to do that. Right. And we can talk later on perhaps about the ways to use it, you know, technically and, and more in terms of like treatment uh, strategies and, and techniques and stuff. What I actually did was combine the sea of blood and the sea of marrow for her. So I was above and below at the same time, feeding them. Right. Up. Okay. Yeah. There's probably yeah. a million ways to work with this, but that's just one way that come instinctively. Yeah. And it really was quite effective. So that's the sea of marrow folks. And if we go to the next slide, you'll see a, just a few images to give the idea of the atmosphere of this sea. Oh yeah, okay. You have the, the skeleton floating there, dark down in the bottom of the ocean, and there's a stairway going down, like yeah, it's a sunken ship, I think, at the bottom of the ocean. The thing on the left is the, is the spine, in terms of a Taoist view of the energy of the body and all the, the different energy centers coming off of it. So we see the spine there as the center of the chakras and the energy system and the, 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 um, the Dantian system. The Sea of Marrow is like the root of the Dantian system and the, the chakra system in that sense. And in the middle there, yeah. that's a picture a friend of mine took. Actually, he's a patient of mine, but he's, a, he's becoming a friend, let's put it that way. That is a skull of a deer or something like that that he found in the forest yeah. on a tree. So it's like it's death, it's skeleton, it's our mortality at that deep level. So let's go, Sea of yeah. Marrow. Let's move it. Uh, Chris, uh, some, a couple of people have said they'd like to have these slides as a handout. Would that be okay? I can send, I can email it to them after the webinar. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. We'll do that then. I'll click when I send out the email after the webinar. I'll I'll put a link into the uh, to these slide to these slides. Brilliant. Okay. And, if you and I believe these are just these are just like a a short. They're like um, a sample of things that you're putting together for Amsterdam. Isn't that right? Right. So in Amsterdam, there'll be a more full presentation of the whole thing you know, including meridians, points, ideas about the extraordinary meridians, extraordinary organs, and how all this sure. comes together so we can start using it. And then with the cheek yeah, sure. as well. We haven't even mentioned that yet, but uh, so that'll be no, a sure. episode. Yeah. And but it's a great introduction. I'm sure, these, I'm sure they'd love to have some of these pictures because they are really good. They're very evocative, aren't they? Yes, they are, I think so. Sea yeah. of blood, folks, look at this. Okay, Go. sea of blood. In the Neijing, it says the Sea of Blood is the Chong Mai. The Chong Mai is the Sea of Blood. So that's really interesting because a lot of people fumble around the extraordinary uh, ingredients, yeah. not sure what they are. They're a bit diffuse identity-wise. Here we go. It's something really concrete to hang the Chong Mai on, the Sea of Blood. Right. Blood yeah. vessels and emotional memory depot. This is, again, something that came out of the treatments. It was nothing that's in the Neijing. It wasn't something I thought of. It's something that came out of the experiences that the students had during some of these sessions that we did so that's there and that's really important because then we know that the blood is flowing and within the blood is all this old memory stuff that we can access and we can start to resolve it so it's quite a deep level because you don't want this stuff at the top you know bursting out left right and center during everyday stuff it's buried at the third level so it's not just going to leap out at people willy-nilly but you can get down to it you can access it and you can resolve it. And that's a really nice thing to help people with, of course. And of course, we have also the diaphragm involved in this sea of blood. Yes. Uh, the level is deep, the time frame is long and slow. We have the medial aspect of the arms and the legs where all the yin meridians flow, especially the pericardium, liver, spleen and kidney. And then the right. diaphragm, yes. the abdomen and the chest are, are like 
key areas, very yin areas. Yeah. We've got some excess and diaphragm. Is, the diaphragm is related to various organs, isn't it? like the liver and the and the heart protector that are really very closely connected it's to the right blood. Right there, aren't Cliff, and it's the same fabric as the diaf as the pericardium. It's actually the same yeah. anatomical fabric. So it's it's really like oh, so that's nice. And the liver and actually, have you have you seen any of Dan Keown's work? Oh, Dan, yeah. Dan Keown. I've read his books. Yeah, I met Kent Dan actually. Not so long ago. In fact, Dan might be because you know he's doing he's doing the next uh, the next webinar after you. Great, watch it, people. He's great. Yeah, so maybe you could uh, you know visit us on that webinar. Right? I would say hi to him. He'll be in Amsterdam. <laughs> and read his he's been Amsterdam. Well, yeah. Dan's books are really good. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So let's um, move on. Just, if, uh, just can I just answer one? Um, Brianna asked, will you be discussing treatment protocols? And actually, we're hoping that you'll have time to do a mini, like a mini treatment demo, aren't you? Yes. Uh, moving on, in about 10 minutes, we'll be doing that. Yep. In about 10 minutes, uh, Brianna, we'll be doing, a, um, well, Chris will be doing a, a demo treatment. So, yep, that's on the, on the cards. <laughs> so let's move on, Cliff. Let's have a look at a few images that the sea of blood comes okay. up in my mind. We have, the, of course, the circulatory system. We have a great big gooey thick, viscous sea of blood down the bottom. We have the uterus and the kidneys in the middle. And then we have, again, the circulatory system as a more a diagram kind of a schematic thing with the upper body, lower body, and again, the lungs and the kidneys in there. So those are images that will help you kind of enter the sea of blood in your, in your mind and in your heart. Yeah, cool. Let's keep moving. Okay, here we go. The here we go. Obviously, it's about digestion, nourishment, resting states. It's very much to do with the earth, meridians. And in fact, in the sea of nutrition is equal to the stomach in the Neijing. That's like labeled. It's really, really clear. Sea of nutrition is the stomach. The stomach is the sea of nutrition. So that's cool. So then we get an idea of the stomach meridian together with the spleen being actually quite yin. Even though it's on the front mm -hmm. of the body and it looks like a yang meridian, and it is. It's got a really yin identity. And if we can enter our stomach meridian, maybe by lying on our belly, or maybe just by opening the front of the body and relaxing. Then we get into the sea of nutrition directly. And what happened here is that when the students were doing their treatment, the sea of nutrition, it just grabbed me and took me down into this kind of kaleidoscope, multicolored internal world. And I understood that this is what the parasympathetic system feels like when it's just doing its thing, almost psychedelic, mm -hmm. but really soft, not a care for the outside world, just absorbing inside myself, resting. And then we have the words recuperation, regeneration, rejuvenation. All of these words are really important for the sea of nutrition. And the Qigong that came out of this was all sorts of sitting, resting, easing, uh, stomach points, and actually lying down things. You know, supine, uh, not supine, what's it called? Yeah, supine positions and using the stomach 36 and large intestine 10 together in all sorts of combinations. That was all new wow. stuff for me that came out of the spontaneous movements coming out of the treatments and the atmosphere which the students created. So it's like alchemy. Wow, it's great, yeah. And it's just below the surface. So as you said before, Cliff, it's really accessible. If we just stop, breathe, switch off, relax, switch down, boom, we're in it. That's it. It's that wow. simple. Yes. Really go yes. fast. And then we can, choof, we're up again. And then we're into the Sea of Chi, which is with the next slide in a few minutes. So we've got the, the next thing. twilight again, just below the surface. It's like a downtime thing. Its frame is like, hmm, downtime. So time kind of disappears a little bit. But it's there if you just tune back into it again. The yeah. eyes, the cheeks. These are like nice areas to fill out if you've got good uh, chi in the sea of nutrition. The abdomen, yeah. of course, and the thighs. The thighs are the storehouses of the sea of nutrition. So if, you're, if you're a model walking the catwalk and you see your thighs all hollowed out, not a good sign. Right. You want okay. nice elastic abundance in these, car, in these uh, thigh muscles. The same thing in the calves. And then the, yeah. especially the top of the feet and the front of the feet. I suppose you've got two associations there. You've got the actual channels, location of the stomach and spleen, and you've also got the relationship with the flesh, haven't you, in TCM, exactly. the, 
exactly. the quality of the flesh. You see how this is fitting together? It's like, it's amazing yeah. how it weaves so many things together, this little yeah. model here. Let's yeah, go into the images for the Sea of Nutrition clip and let's see if we can yeah. get time for a treatment. Yeah. Let's see what we've got here then. Do you want to go next? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Oh, you've got some good pictures. Right, so we've got a laughing Buddha. This is the, the Buddha who's not so serious, right? He's just, yeah, comfortable. He's got a cat sleeping on his lap. Everything's comfortable. <laughs> it's really round and nice. And there's the two cats sleeping together in that beautiful yin-yang. Oh, yeah. It's like it's rotund, but it's comfortable and it's round. In the middle, you've got whales. That's how they sleep. They just get into a current of water and they put themselves there and they sleep. Just below the surface, you can see the light shining down on, their, on top of their face there. Yeah. And then you can see a woman relaxing with her cat in that classic child's position from yoga. Then you have a bear yeah. who's supposed to be hibernating and he's like, oh shit, I shouldn't have had that coffee keeping me awake. <laughs> so again, it's like too much coffee will, will do that to you. Too much stimulation of any variety, too much internet, too much Facebook, too much chat, too much party, too much radio interference will keep you out yeah. of the sea of nutrition. So you need sometimes to just wall off the outside world and get into your cave. That's not so difficult. We can do it in three seconds. No, there it is, the sea of nutrition. Yeah, brilliant. Let's go, sea of chi. Here we go, folks. That's the Niagara yeah. Falls, everybody. Uh, it's a picture I took at the Niagara Falls a bunch of years ago. Torrential power. And it's like this beautiful external power of the world exemplified in that picture for me anyway um it might not be obvious to everybody but that's what that's supposed to be and there's the sky there's the clouds yep. there's the outside world with its its textures and there's the five senses and everything's like whoosh, out there so it's activity alertness and waking states so it's like a, yeah. a a yang compared to the yin of the sea of nutrition so those two yes within the model they make a yin yang between themselves it's really fascinating Yes. What have we got? We've got superficial level. We've got now. It's the time. Yeah. Ears, throat, neck, shoulders, neck, all the sensory stuff, chest, arms, and hands. Very much the upper body. And then the signs of excess and deficiency all have to do with the breath or the chest or fullness or emptiness, speaking difficult, breathing difficult, that kind of thing. Yeah. So it's very superficial stuff. Also very important, of course, but it's, it's not deep stuff. It's superficial stuff. Let's have a look yeah. at the Sea of Chi images. Yeah. So if you look at the right side of the screen, people, you'll see the whale tails and the rainbow. These are signs of like whew, life coming out. There's a couple yeah. of dolphins surfing. They love to surf. They love to play and interact. And yeah. then there's a dog on a surfboard. It's like a ridiculous picture, but there you have it. This play idea of interacting and fun and surface enjoyment of life, which, yeah, it's also important. Then the sea of chi has this other aspect. If you look at the left side of the screen, there's that, an egret or a heron, I'm not too quite sure what that bird is, but it's basking in the moonlight. And moonlight is not completely yin, it has a yang aspect, it does have radiation, it does have a kind of energy which you can charge yourself with in a very clear way. So the sea of chi within itself has two aspects. There's even a yin and yang within this. I didn't, yeah. I didn't understand that until the Qigong grabbed me and told me yes. what it was, and then I understood it. So it was all about the experience, the alchemy of the treatments, the Qigong, the treatments, the Qigong, students, the patients. So it's all just... Is that, would you say that's more the quieter, the more tranquil part of being in the Qi yes. or Qi area? Exactly. It's like the yin within the yang kind of exactly thing. Exactly what it is, Cliff, and it's like you're alert, you're fully present, yeah. But you're very calm. Right. You're okay, not yeah. underneath the surface. You're at the surface, but you're fully present and just completely calm. And there's that tranquility. Yeah. Total presence. Yeah. An interesting thing that I stumbled into a number of years ago is this thing about the waves, the brain waves, and how the binaural beats yes. and all that stuff. And I realized yes. halfway through all this that this C of G, when it really works well, is very similar to the gamma wave thing. Yeah, the peak moment, the total alertness, the absolute presence. Whereas the others yes. are more like alpha, theta, and delta as we're going down. Right. Yeah, it's actually a really useful modern kind of <clears throat> scientific way of finding a yes. to these four C's, and it really kind of fits. 
bit sure, yeah. just regular everyday stuff and that's that's fine as well but it doesn't it's kind of in between the chi and the nourishment in a sense you know that kind of everyday yeah. thing that we, we tend to should have uh, should have said asks is there a yin and yang aspect of all the levels then that's a question right now yes there is there is that's becoming more and more clear i'm not absolutely clear about and can define it all for you now but that's coming more and more right, especially with yeah, the blood yeah. that's becoming clearer during these last couple of weeks actually yes yeah so, Cliff, this is really work in progress it's not finished no no well you've got a big you've got so little so little material <laughs> yeah it's written haven't you you've got a lot of room there <laughs> plenty of room for maneuvers put it that way yeah <laughs> so what have we got after this cliff let's have a look oh we've got this one. Oh, so this is like this one and the next one flick to the next one just quickly so people can see yeah it's this one and this Spirit. one yeah so the sea of nutrition and the sea of chi we forgot that one they form yeah. a yin and yang with each other and these pictures i just borrowed them from polyvagal theory and to show yeah. you just up and down above and below that axis line that's the sea of chi and the sea of nutrition they're right they're just next door neighbors and you can easily go up and down from one to the other they're not that inaccessible from each other yes they make a kind of yin and yang pair within the four even though obviously within the four marrow is the yin the absolute yin and chi is the absolute yeah. yang but still within everything we know don't we that there's yin within yang and yang within yin and this is of course, one example yeah. of that yeah. which struck me and then people will get this as their handout so they can compare the sea of chi and the sea of nourishment and see this beautiful thing about the sympathetic and the parasympathetic these are not anything to do with pathology act they're to do with physiology how we work yeah and the sympathetic nerves and the sympathetic mode is just this beautiful thing where we come out into the world and we meet the world but then the yeah. parasympathetic is we meet ourselves we go in and it's really yeah. just that interaction continually going on the switch and the well you've got the other side of the you've got the other side of the parasympathetic though the ventral vagal haven't you which is to do with socialization and eating funnily enough yes. eating and you know, I thought that was because um, I did some research. Well, we did a whole load of research um, when we produced a, an online course on treating trauma, oh. stress and trauma okay. about a year ago. And we went into all the different theories. And the polyvagal theory was just so brilliant. And it maps so well to Chinese medicine. Great. It yes. really does. It's so brilliant like that. This is so you've got that there with your, on your diagram. Safe and social. There it is, safe and social, mate. That's what I say. Yeah. So all the way down yeah. on the Sea of Chi, the last thing you'll see there, external rejuvenation. So that's rejuvenation through external energies. Breath, yeah. interaction, sunlight, cosmic energy, etc., etc. stuff that comes from outside. And the Wei Chi there is going to be dominant because your energy is at the surface of the body. Wei Chi, yeah. of course, implies a certain defensiveness, but not defensiveness in terms of locking things out, but just being, you know, aware. Yeah. If we go to the yeah. sea of nourishment, the next slide, I believe, the next okay. one or the one before, I can't remember. Yeah, there it is. You'll see it's the opposite. It's internal rejuvenation. We, we repair stuff from inside and we rejuvenate ourselves yeah. through regeneration, through reparation, through digestion. And then the yin chi is more dominant, the digestive chi flowing through the meridians, yes. much more internal. So that's a yeah. kind of a, a model within itself, those two. Yes, that's interesting, isn't it? Because the whole um, pa um, polyvagal thing really emphasizes that whole ability of us to be safe in a social environment. It's all to do with eating, nurturing yourself emotionally, and being safe, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's right there in that sort of nut nutritive zone. Perfect. Yeah. So it's so interesting, isn't it, how they connect? We've come to the practical part, have we? Just in time. Uh, yep, yeah, we've got one question. Okay. Asaf says, what's the key to cross from one to the other? I'm not quite sure what you mean by that. Oh, it's, I mean, what, how would you do it? How would you flick up and how would you flick down? Yeah, maybe. I think that's what he means. Or may, may, maybe between the yin and the yang of all the levels, I'm not sure. Well, it would be a progressive descending and a progressive ascending. And a, a fully functioning yeah. human being is able to do that, of course. But if you have any pathology right. anywhere, then you'd have a block on one or more of the levels and you wouldn't be able to. Right, okay. That, yes. would be, yes. that would be your gauge. That would be your diagnosis in a sense. You know, where's this yes. stuck and where do I need to then go and do the treatment? 
And from a pathological point of view, then does it, is it a bit like the the um, the six divisions and that? Is it as the sense that um, pathologies tend to start on the key level and then they go down deeper down as they get more serious? Not more necessarily, chronic. because you can be born with genetic effects, and that was already in the sea of marrow or the sea of blood. Right. Okay. Yeah. Sure. So that'd be more like a congenital thing. Yeah. So the six divisions yeah. is really useful in many ways, I think, but the way it's presented in the Shan Han Lung, which you're talking about there, is the way infectious diseases come in. That's right. Yes. So this yeah. is a more general way of looking at pathology, not just infectious diseases, but, you know, um, genetic disease, yes. trauma disease, because you can have a trauma that can go straight down into the blood or straight down into you can. the marrow, right? And then we're not yeah, six yeah. in the same sense as a pathogen entering and slowly developing through. We're talking about yes, it going right. into the six divisions like Bill Palmer talks about it, as these levels yes. that exist within us that are accessible through these pairs of meridians. Yeah, that's right. Yes. That's a beautiful yeah. theory. Love, love the six divisions. But we can't talk about that now, Cliff. No, no, no. Just, no. But I just, I just suddenly occurred to me that, you know, you would be – because it's all these different layers and you're absolutely right if you get a really serious trauma it can go cut through right to the right to the marrow literally to the marrow literally and then you have to get down there and help them work with it or help yeah them exactly them. absolutely yeah that's it yeah okay we better if you're going to do a treatment we better we better move on you better you? Head, i think we've got a slide yeah, so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take the slides off now show them um, the, the uh the treatment slide cliff so they can see okay let's have a look I think it's the next yeah, oh, no, this one. Yeah, okay. So you'll see people, we're gonna work from the sea of chi, through the sea of nutrition, through the sea of blood, through the sea of marrow. And then what that means in practice is we'll start at the top, at the neck and throat, working down the chest okay. and the abdomen, down the legs, and then we'll go up again, following the arrow, the blue arrow on the right, to the back, right at the top, just below the neck, and the skull at the top to find the points on the sea of marrow. And then we're finished right, okay. around the abdomen. Now, all of these points, except GV4 and CV4, all of them, nearly all of them, are mentioned in the Neijing chapter. So this is also stuff that the Neijing gives us. All right. Not because all I noticed that I noticed I noticed that in uh, like the classical point locations, they do say this point affects the sea of marrow and exactly. blah blah. And everything. That's what but in there, they never tell you what that means. This is exactly where I started off, Cliff. So I kind of think, yeah. well, what does it mean? I mean, in practice. So let's, yeah, sure, yeah. let's have a look, see. Okay, do you, shall I take this uh, slide off now so they've got a full view of let's you? Let's do the treatment. Do you want to introduce your, introduce your assistant? This is Marina. Hello. Hi, Marina. Marina. Hi. Papa my girlfriend. Thank you very much for being a body. I'm going, to I'm going to turn my video off for a bit so that you're going to be full screen for everyone. Wonderful. So we've got 15 minutes. To do this uh, which way this way hi everybody we're going to start underneath the neck at a point called governor 14. So you might to... want to just put yeah, i think you should bring your camera slightly down a bit just slightly so we can see more of marina yes just i think you're bit. right yeah that's it that's perfect that's perfect yeah that's great Will that work yeah that's brilliant So we're beginning with the points of the sea of chi, and the first point is governor 14, which a lot of you will know, aha, that's where all the yang meridians meet, isn't it? Exactly, so it's a great place to start with the sea of chi. chi sea of chi being very yang, very active, and all about exciting the senses. So bring the chi up to the neck, sensory organs get information, and off we go. We're well, gonna do this very rapidly, Obviously, this is not the speed you do it with a client, but just to get you used to the, the rhythm of the kata. Governor 14 is underneath the thick, enormous vertebrae at the base of the neck, right underneath that on the spine. So we'll just spend a couple of seconds saying hello to that point. And I've got my hands on the floor, one inside the other, and just a little lift up into the point is enough to get it started get things moving at the base of the neck. And your direction is upwards, not only because it's convenient and you can use the floor, the earth, to generate the pressure, but also because our next point is at the front of the throat. It's a quite unusual point. Most of you won't use it. I don't use it that much myself. 
stomach nine. You can see it on me at the front of the neck here. You find the stenocleidic mastoid muscle here at the side. Just go to the front border of that muscle, right in the center, at the head of the Adam's apple, boom, out to here. There's a pulsing or, um, artery, just got outside of it, right at the border of the muscle there. And that will be stomach meridian, stomach nine, and it's called welcome human. And I'm just going to rest my thumbs on that point. So the weight of your arms, the weight of your elbows, the weight of your shoulder and neck, just coming down through your thumb tips. Very light pressure, but still it's firm and it's comfortable. And it's very appreciable. People will feel that very, very clearly. You might even activate the swallowing reflex. So what we've done so far is we come from the back, the spine, to the front. This point is well known for reducing blood pressure and emptying the chi from the head and sending it down through the body. We're going to follow that direction now by taking a point <coughs> in the middle of the chest. This is Ren 17, CV 17, and it's called Shanjong. That means chest center. Some of you know it as the pericardium moon point or ball point. And it's also the influential point for chi, which of course says a whole lot about the relationship between this area and the sea of chi itself. Now, in the Neijing, the sea of chi is called Shanjong. So it's called exactly the same as this point and this area. And a lot of acupuncturists will go into a lot of detail about what the Shanjong area means in terms of circulation and breathing and the, the whole chest area. So again, it's called chest center. And what we're doing now is just moving ourselves down towards the lower body and at the same time, we're sinking down into the lower seas. So from the surface, moving down. And the next point will be just below the navel where Marina's already got her hands. She's already anticipated my next move. And it's just below the navel, one and a half soon. Some of you know that point, CV6, Chi Hai, C of Chi. So this one is like right in the middle of the C of Chi. It's not mentioned in the Neijing. I put it in there, quite cheeky, but it fits. The name's there. Let's do it. Moving down. If you're not comfortable about the navel, if it seems a bit nasty, find the waist, come in gently, and you're going to go one and a half sun down. So measure a sun with your thumb, and just below that. If you go two sun down, that's the triple heater move point. We don't want to go there right now, although it's a great place to go. Not today. Chi high, sea of chi. This is the final point on the sea of chi. And from here, gathering and moving into the sea of nutrition. It's the furthest point down on the abdomen, on the stomach meridian. You can see where I am. So it's right above the pubic bone, right on the border of the pubic bone. Stomach 30. This is the upper point of the sea of nutrition. The lower point of the sea of nutrition is an old friend of ours. Stomach 36. That's some of you do it with four fingers from the kneecap. There it is. Stomach 36. You can just rest the finger there, or you can let your thumb rest on that point. That's the lower point of the sea of nutrition. That's the upper point of the sea of nutrition. So you can see what Cliff was talking about, the flesh and the earth meridians coming down here. It's like, wow, classic. There it is, the sea of nutrition. And it's on both sides, of course. So I'll just treat on this side as well for the sake of completeness. We're moving from the back to the front, from the up to the down. And now we're coming into the sea of blood. Of course, I'm doing this way, way faster than you do it in practice. Just because we're running out of time, that's the only reason. We're going to make two points now on the stomach meridian, stomach 37 and stomach 39. Some of you will know them as the lower points of the large intestine and small intestine. Let me show you on this leg. It will be clearer. So stomach 36, four fingers down, 37, four fingers down. 39. 39 to 37. You're, normally I'd go around to treat them, but I don't want to be in your way, so I'm just doing it like this. 
This is the lower point for the large intestine. This is the lower point for the small intestine. Now that can be a bit confusing until we think, sea of blood? Hold on a second, where does blood come from? Part of it comes from digestion, right? So this is the yang, believe it or not, part of the sea of blood. Somebody asked me just now if there was a yin and yang part of all of these seas. This is the yang part of the sea of blood. It's on the stomach meridian. In a minute, we're going to see the yin side of it when we go up the tree at the top of the body. Because these are the lower points of the sea of blood. And the upper points are up there. We'll find them in just a few minutes. So here we go. Stomach 36, 37, and 39. Use your own techniques, of course. I'm just showing you very roughly here. And very quickly as well. We're doing this very, very rapidly. You spend at least twice as much time on these points if you're doing it by yourself. This takes between half an hour and 40 minutes to do it as a real treatment. So we've come through the sea of chi, sea of nutrition. Now we've started the sea of blood. We have the lower points of the sea of blood, stomach 37, stomach 39. We're going to go up to finish off. The sea of blood and it's a point on the bladder meridian it's at the very top of the back bladder 11 it's the very first point on the bladder meridian at the top of the spine so what we do is we find the point we were on before governor 14 we go down one more space and we go out from there so from governor 14 one more space down and then out and again just resting your hands on the floor, resting your body towards your hand and allow your fingers, I use my middle fingers here, to go up into the point. You can even do a little kyo and jitsu thing on both sides there. There's like a clear kyo and jitsu relationship on each side of the spine for most people. This is the upper point of the sea of blood. It's on the bladder meridian, bladder 11, and this is the influential point for bone and skeleton. So you can see that that would be the yin aspect of the sea of blood, how blood comes out of the marrow and is produced. Also, not just from the digestion, but also from the marrow. So we have a yin aspect of the sea of blood there, whereas the yang aspect was the stomach meridian. Now, that leads us really, really nicely into the sea of marrow, of course. And that starts at the base of the skull, governor vessel, the governor 16, right at the base of the skull, in the center line, and that's Dumai 16, Governor 16, the Palace of Wings. This is the lower point of the Sea of Marrow. And in the Neijing, the way they describe it, it's quite easy to think that all of the governor points on the back of the head, all the way up to Governor 20, which is where my thumb is resting at the top here, all of those points are part of the Sea of Marrow, which gives us a nice picture of the back of the brain, the back of the skull being the seat of the Sea of Marrow. So 16 there, 17 is just above it, and it's called the door of the brain, the door to the brain. And right at the top, the vertex, put one thumb on top of the other if you like that technique. You just lean from the Dantian, from Yahara, Straighten the spine, relax your arms, let your breath come down through the diaphragm. And you're at the upper point of the sea of marrow. So we've gone from back to front, down to the sea of chi, down to the sea of nutrition, down to the sea of blood, up to the sea of blood and into the sea of marrow. What we're going to do now is just finish this whole thing off because she will be really nervous about the time here. We're going to finish off the treatment in a really standard kind of way that a lot of people use. I use it all the time by uniting the back and the front in the lowest part of the abdomen. So it's still in tune with the sea of marrow using the governor, using the conception at the points of original chi. So let's go down there and do that together if you're with me. I'm going to just open up Marina's arm there slightly. Going underneath the body with one hand, and I connect with the spine underneath, so your fingers are like this, possibly. Maybe, if there's a big 
curve, you can put your whole hand and have the spine resting in your palm, but that's not usually the case, usually just hand resting on the floor, fingers connecting with Ming Men, governor for the gateway of life. So it's a nice image for the, for where the marrow is the, the bedrock of life. And then from the navel, tweets and down, that's CV4 right there, the gateway of the original chi. Let's let my palm rest there. Palm is heavy, fingers are light underneath. Then we have this beautiful meeting. We gather all of the chi which we've mobilized and we bring it into the center here. Bringing the person's energy back to the origins, their own origins and the original chi in a more general sense. What I tend to do is gradually with the breath, bring the hand out from underneath. And then relaxing the hand, letting it lighten with the breath. Bring that back. And we're done. Just want to say a big thank you to Marina, by the way, from that, from everyone who's watching. Thank you so much for being the model. <laughs> That's really great. You've made history, actually. It's the first time we've actually had a live treatment on the on the, the webinar series. So it's really, really great. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, she also I'll made put the slides. slides back up because Remember? someone wanted to have a quick look at it. Yeah. Yeah, great. Excellent. Oh, well, yeah, of course, Marina, yeah, Marina was, yeah, she gets lot. the credits for the slides as well. Yeah. Yeah, it made them look really over, good. Really used to have someone like that. Perfect. <laughs> I've got a question for you from Karen, which is, do you do this as Excellent. a routine, as this routine as a treatment, um, or is there a specific diagnosis which will lead to using that particular sequence of points? Well, yeah. The way I use this treatment is as a jungle. So I'll start with the C of G. And if I notice things happening, I'll stay in the CFG right. and do some work there. If I don't really see anything specific going on, I'll keep going right. into the sea of nutrition. And if start, things start to take off, if I know the pathology is there, or the symptoms are there, or I know that the stomach and spleen need a lot of work, and that kind of pathology is indicated, then I'll stay there and do a lot more work oh, in I the sea of nutrition. But if I'm fairly sure that I want to go down a bit deeper, I'll continue into the blood part of this treatment, and then I'll jump off there and do more blood work. Right. And if I want to go all the way, I'll just do the whole of that and then just do some marrow work at the end, which is what we did in a sense yeah. with the finishing yeah. off part. But of course, there's much more you can do, of course. There's a whole bunch yeah. of techniques you can do for that. And that's the kind of thing we'll be talking about. Yeah, Ian. absolutely. After so if that, anyone's, uh, well, quite, we already know from the poll that quite a lot of people are actually going to Amsterdam. So soon, very soon, I think in the next month or yes. so, you'll be given options of which workshops to um, attend. And it's going to be quite a difficult choice as well, because I think there are about five workshops all happening at once. Um, so if this is uh, this yeah. kind of thing has uh, uh, created an interest in you, and it has certainly has in me, I'll see if I can work, work it so that I'm videoing your session. <laughs> um, so um, yeah, we've got to finish up. We've just got a couple of minutes. Are there any um, are there any questions, or would you just like to say thank you to Chris and Marina, which we've got? We're getting a lot, a lot of them, a lot of thank yous coming into the chat. Okay, so this sure. is part of a series of uh, webinars. Uh, Chris is fits very nicely actually because we've got Dan Kio next, um, and and uh, we can see there is we can see connections. And looking back, I was thinking also Joyce Flower Camps in a um, inner work. I don't know if you saw any of that, but that was that's amazing as well. Those inner images. I thought they they dovetail. Um, to the the, the chat's absolutely over over completely full with them. great feedback. Thank you so much. They, people really enjoyed it. And they really like the fact they really like the demo as well. And I think that's that's a really good thing because especially Shiatsu people with their energy aware, they can. And I certainly I was definitely seeing quite a lot of things happening as you were working. So. Even at, even at the mm -hmm. fast speed that you were doing it. Oh. Yeah, that's obviously even way too fast. Happened, I saw still, some great movement happen. in the legs there. 
really good and it was really nice the way you finished, yeah. finished the whole treatment off um, okay someone asked can we expect an well, email for the next webinar day well I tell you what it's the um, it's the same uh, it's the same Tuesday of the month all the way through the series so you'll get the email reminders um, when they come in and we, we, we always email out anyway with uh, like a little clip of uh, what's happening coming up so that just uh, just leaves me to say thank you so much for tuning in thank you Chris it's been fascinating really great presentation and I just really look forward to seeing you in Amsterdam thank you so much okay Thanks, man. okay no Thanks problem for your yeah. help. great work great work yeah Bye. see you in Amsterdam yeah see you there